We're here with Daniel Kurish, broadcaster of the Aberdeen Ironbirds, and we're going to be talking about one of the top high school players in the draft this year, Ryan Moncastle, who is the last player picked in the first round from the Baltimore Orioles, a shortstop. And Daniel, what have you seen from this kid? He's had four games thus far. What do you like from him, and why are the Orioles so high on this kid? Well, the reason you can really be so high on him is his bat. His bat is absolutely incredible. The first pitch he saw was a home run, a very, very long home run to left field, and I think he has hits in every game he's played, maybe one where he didn't. But other than that, he's, his bat has been mightily impressive. His defense isn't so bad, but, I mean, he'll work on that as he grows and grows into his body, but it's easy to be high on the kid, what we've seen at the plate. One thing that the scouts have noticed is his bat speed. He could just get on top of the ball, and he's really been able to crush some of those baseballs. Gulf Coast League, he was the Orioles minor league player of the month last month, and he's really brought that to Aberdeen for the first three or four games so far. Yeah, his bat speed has been really impressive. He's making a lot of contacts, doing a really nice job with it. And he has one home run already, and it was absolutely obliterated to left field. He flew out in his first at-bat in his second game. He flew out to the warning track, so he came up a little short on that one. But it's it's really easy to really like this kid at the plate. And one thing that the scouts, a lot of people have also liked about him is his selectivity at the plate. He sees a lot of pitches. His second game that he played, he was two out of five. He had two hits, was a key contributor in that victory for them. Last at bat, he started chasing some of the outside pitches. Is that a pitch that he does have trouble with outside that maybe pitchers are going to start taking advantage of him with? I haven't seen it that that's really a pitch that he had trouble with. Maybe just a bad at bat, maybe just a bad time of day of seeing the ball or something. But I, it's really an advanced hitter is what I what everyone seems to be calling him. And it's, it's not inaccurate. The kid has an eye beyond his ears, that's for sure. What is the biggest adjustment and transition for a high school player when they have to play in the New York penalty? They're going from the Gulf Coast where maybe five, ten fans a game, and then they have these ballparks where you have to hold three, four, five thousand in Brooklyn. They hold about eight thousand. So is that a big transition for him or for other players coming from the Gulf Coast to professional baseball? I don't think that it's really the adjustment in the fans. I think they're fine. Once once you get between the lines, the game is the game. I, I don't think they get too spooked out about the fans. I think the biggest adjustment, really, and it's more of a better adjustment for them, is the lifestyle in the Gulf Coast League and the lifestyle in the New York Penn League. New York Penn League has a better lifestyle in terms of you come to the ballpark before the game, say 2 o'clock for a 7 o'clock game. You go through your warm-ups, you do all that, you get ready for the game, you eat, you play. and that's Then you go home you sleep a little later, you come back and do it all again at 2 o'clock the next day. In the Gulf Coast League, you're up at 6.30 in the morning, you go through a practice, then you play the game, then you're done. But it's up at 6.30 the next day, you go to bed early, you wake up early, and everything is eat, sleep, breathe baseball. Now, some of the things that you're probably not used to is the post-game spread there is something that's probably a little better. I know the Gulf Coast League has a chef down there that'll make you whatever, and you go, you eat it, it's done. Here, it's a little more, if they have a spread, it's probably something peanut butter and jelly or like pizza one day, a getaway meal, something like that, or you go out after the game and find something. So it's it's a completely different lifestyle. I don't think it's really the crowds that sweep them, but it's a completely different lifestyle of just a little better in the New York Penn League go out and just play. Speaking of lifestyle, it's probably been a big adjustment for him with lifestyle because in high school he wasn't a well-known guy. He was from Orlando, Florida. He went to a small high school. Then all of a sudden he was playing in the Under Armour game with Wrigley Field. Had two hits in that game, was the MVP. Scouts were scouting Brendan Rodgers, who was the third pick in the draft. And all of a sudden they noticed this guy, Ryan Moncastle, 20 minutes away. And then he becomes a big name. So in a sense, it's also been a bit of a culture shock the last two years for him because he's gone from this being from this unknown player to now being one of the top prospects in the Orioles system. Yeah, I'm sure that's been a shock to the system for him of all of a sudden he is someone very, very important to a lot of people after probably his sophomore year. He wasn't really known that well, but it really seems to have worked out for him. First round pick and already called up to the New York Penn League. All, all that at 18 years old. And what do you think of his makeup from either people you're talking to or what you've seen of him at 18 years old? We talked a lot about that. What do you think of his makeup and just his demeanor off the field? He's such a happy-go-lucky kid. He's, he's always smiling and like he's, he's taking it really well. Um, he's really enjoying himself, just go out and play baseball every day and all that kind of fun stuff. And like they're they're having a really good time with him down there in the in the dugout as well. I know his first home run they gave him the silent treatment, so he, they've really taken to him and he's taken to the team as well. So I think it's 
it's good for the kid, and he's he's a happy kid right now. And he was drafted primarily for his bat. He talked about the bat speed and the selectivity and the power that he had. Defensively, he's still a bit of a work in progress. It's been a bit of a trek for him. He's been a bit slow to ground balls, trying to field some of them, made an error the other day. Some scouts are saying that his future might be at third base or in the outfield. Do you believe that he could stay at shortstop, or do you feel that maybe it's just early jitters defensively with him? I mean, it's so early to tell because you've got an 18-year-old kid out there now playing against older guys, and it's it's a completely different speed. Going from high school, there may be one, two, three professional prospects that you're ever going to play against at the high school level, and now you've got all of them. So it's, I think it's way too early to give up on him in any sense of anything in baseball. So it's... It's really a work in progress, but I'm sure he'll get there. No matter what, the kid has a great mental makeup of he's willing to do whatever it takes to get up there. And talking about doing whatever it takes, what adjustments does he have to make to be able to get to the next level in the next year or two or as he progresses his way through the system? Uh, you know, just keep swinging the bat well, and I think as time goes on, 18 years old, you're going to grow into your body a little more. Every Everyone always preaches in the offseason you have to get bigger and stronger and faster. And at 18 years old, he's got a little more room to get bigger and stronger and faster. So he's got a big frame. I think he's 6'3", and he's 185 pounds. I'm sure he'll bulk up a little bit in the offseason with the professional training program. So I think just getting bigger, going through everything, and making sure that his body gets to where it needs to be this level. And Royal fans have seen a big shortstop before, 6'3", almost 200-pound shortstop. His name is Cal Ripken, obviously. Ryan Moncastle is not going to be him, but hopefully he'll be able to have a meaningful career in Baltimore. So, Daniel, thanks for joining us, and we hope to see him down the road. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Gershaw.